Hello, John Talley here with Martzilla.com. And as you can see, I am not in the studio this Friday at three o'clock. I'm actually up for a gathering in Charlottesville, Virginia. Really an interesting place, beautiful country. But I'm going to go ahead and answer a few questions before I head out that door and go find the rest of the crew and probably enjoy a, an adult libation here shortly. But I'm going to spend a few minutes with y'all, maybe uh, catch up on some questions that I may have missed last week. And then if anybody sends in anything this time, we'll address those as well before I, I call it a, a week, so to speak. So let me swing around and look at a couple last week that I may have missed or that, were, that I said I was going to circle back to. Yes, D-Dub, he had sent or asked a question last week. John, did you think if I ever never synced my throttle body on my 2018 Ninja 1000, it could make my bike rock from side to side while idling? I have had some time to think about it. And... Potentially it could, because not having them synced correctly would, in essence, create a misfire, especially present at idle. If the throttle plates are not all exactly in sync, you'd have one that was firing maybe a little bit less than the other. And that would make a little bit of a, uh, a shimmy. Although the, the rotation is going this direction, it can still cause a little side to side movement by you know, things not being in balance. So to answer your question, yes, you need to go in and sync your throttle plates. Kevin Soto had sent a question or asked a question once again. I have a 2010 Yamaha R1 and the engine blue road road. It will start for oil at high RPMs. Could this be an oil pump issue or the oil filter not having enough flow or maybe both? Well, more than likely it was an oil flow issue. Let me ask a couple of questions or something for you to think about because uh, I ran into this on an R1, uh, a little bit older than yours. The guy had uh, just wasted his clutch. I mean, just blew it out and didn't do a good enough job of cleaning it out, rebuilt his engine, and yet it still starved the, the cams, and then chaos ensued and spun a couple of bearings. When it turned out to be, it was an old cooler down on the front side of the engine, and it has such small passageways. At low RPMs, you would notice it, but at higher RPMs, too much back pressure there, not enough flow up top, boom, there goes the engine. So it was, uh, you know, what saved the new build was going through and being very thorough, cleaning every single part of the engine, including that old cooler, but the old cooler is the part that really, you know, brought it to its knees. So be careful of that. You may, especially if you've had if you uh, fried your clutch, and especially if the plates completely broke down and wiped away, all of that material is still flying around your engine. You've got to get it out. Um, so this may have been caused by uh, a not so thorough cleaning of the, uh, the old passageways and the old cooler being one of those. So if we've got anybody lining up yet. Eh, a couple more, but let's, let's still hit some of the questions from last week because I, I hate leaving everybody hanging. <clears throat> RC James 361 is mobile one motorcycle oil the same as automotive oil? No, it is not. And specifically because the engines on most of your conventional motorcycles use what they call a, a, uh, a wet clutch system. So the, the clutch plates that was, we were just talking about are spinning in the same oil as your gears. So uh, that takes a very specific type of oil and car oil is not really designed for that type of environment. So no, I would not use mobile one automotive oil inside my motorcycle or vice versa. All right. Little uh, KWS is this oil consumption in an Articat Altera 500 2017 normal. It is about 0.5 to 0.7 liters every 50 hours. I guess that's acceptable, uh, especially if you're running it hard. Um, uh, I make a reference to my track day car a pretty good bit, and it's normal for that car because we're running it nine or ten tenths all day, <laughs> every day of the weekend that we're running it, and uh, we we generally burn through about a quart every 
two to 300 miles, but that is because we are hammering that poor engine. So um, 50 hours, uh, that's probably not too much. And you know, half a liter, that's a little bit less than half a quart. So we're right at it. My metric conversion has never been that great. I wouldn't worry about it um, as long as you're aware of it, which is the primary thing and can keep ahead of it. Keep putting in oil until she starts running adversely and then maybe open it up or get worried about it at that point. Let's see. Yeah, we got a few questions. <clears throat> Truly vert. What should I get? A KW, how about a KX 250F or a YZ 250F? They're both great machines. I mean, way back when, in the dark ages, in the 60s and 70s, there would be such a difference in between the different manufacturers. It, it was just staggering, and they would leapfrog over each other. One year, it would be the CR. Next year, it would be the 250. I mean, the uh, the YZ. And the one after that, it would be the KX. I mean, and it was just groundbreaking innov innovations that would uh, come about. Now, there's smaller increments of, well, what's close to perfection at this point, let's be honest. And it truly comes down just to rider preference as far as how the machine feels under you. Which one would I go with? Mm, I probably lean more toward the blue. Uh, it's just my, my weapon of choice. You know, although a KX 125 was probably one of the best machines I ever had, but that was a long, long time ago, but there was no way I'd be afraid to throw a leg over one right now. So that being said, hey, whichever one feels right to you, that's the one you should go to. I'll see if I can get to it quick enough. I was going to show you just how far back my writing goes. <laughs> I think I can get to this relatively quickly. If not, get a little, uh, little move on. I have too many pictures on my Facebook page. No, don't stalk me, please. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, way back when uh, I was a KX rider myself. <laughs> All right, what the heck? <clears throat> Midlake is asking me, good afternoon, sir. My 2008 Mercury 60 horsepower doesn't have a water separator. Should I add one? Unless there's one under the cowling, I'm not sure. All right. Um, no, it's not going to have a, uh, a, a, a water fuel separator. Should No, actually it does. Um, it, uh, if you follow your fuel line up through the cowling of the engine, you're going to find a, a white... Uh, well, it's going to be a filter and it's going to have a replaceable element inside of it. Uh, so it should have one in there, especially a 60. I, I've seen them as small on uh, outboards as small as 20 horsepower. How did you know to ask me that question? Have you been over to our boats.net site, maybe? <laughs> oh, boy. Don't tell me I'm going to have to start doing these for two different, uh, two different live events. Hey, I'm unafraid. Robert is asking me, hey, John, I have a, an 04 ZX-10. I bypass the fuel tank and spray spray and throttle bodies. Bite will run, but not from tank. Any ideas what the problem is? It's also not the original key for the bike. All right. More than likely, I'm trying to remember, is the 04? I'm pretty sure that's, is that fuel injected or not? All right. Well, we'll let's ask. Let's answer the questions in both ways. If it's fuel injected, and oh, you said throttle bodies. Um, it's, it sounds like it's going to be your, your fuel pump to me. Uh, when you turn on the bike, does it? Can you hear the um, the pump prime up? You should build a. You should hear a click, and then you should hear that motor run for about a second and a half, maybe two seconds, you to know, bring up that pressure. If for some reason I'm wrong, and this is a, a carbureted machine, I'd say you've got a a. a it is stopped up somewhere, possibly on the filter on the petcock or coming down into the uh, the fuel rail, if you will, if it's a carbureted machine. I really don't think it's carbureted. For some reason, I think that one is um, fuel in injected. If I can't remember what year they switched over to that. 
at any rate, um, it, which it is probably a, a FI bike, it's more than likely going to be either A, your <coughs> fuel filter fuse, or it's going to be the fuel pump itself. And I've walked through a couple of different machines of how you diagnose that. And one in particular, I believe that was our GSXR uh, 1000. Although it's a different manufacturer, the rundown process should be about the same. So why don't you take a look at that video and see if uh, that can guide you in the correct direction on your Cowie. Tybor is asking me, hello, CRF 450 2002. Engine ticking, changed the cam chain tensioner, shimmed valves, and was still there. What else to check? All right, does that particular model, I know that O5 does, believe me, I know that one too well, I have a uh, decompression release or a compression uh, release uh, mechanism on the side of the camshaft? If it does, that has to be adjusted as well. And I think the total clearance for both of those units is. I want to say it's like four or five thousandths. So you've got your clamps going to the uh, the exhaust valves, and then you've got that other arm coming off the decompression portion of the camshaft, with, which should only come into effect at uh, lower RPMs or on startup. Um, but if that is just insanely loose, it may just be sitting there popping back and forth. And that's the, that's what you hear. So check that. See if the see if that is what it is. All right, <clears throat> MC, hey, John, I have an 06 YFZ450. My clutch cable touched my starter, made a big arc, ouch. My, my starter now, uh, have no, I have no spark at the spark plug, and now uh, it turns over, just check stator, new spark plug. All right, clutch cable touched my starter, made a big arc. Hmm. Now you have no part, spark. Well, obviously, this is going to be an electrical issue, but uh, the real trick is what in the world could you have uh, shorted out by letting the uh, or having the clutch cable go across there? I mean, that, that's really odd. Uh, I hope I can't imagine that I could have backfed into your uh, the ECU, but uh, there's on a motocross bike, it's not that complicated. Uh, you see, there's A going to be your very good. Um, Possibly your your, uh, your your trigger, which is outside of the um, or incorporated with the stator, if you want to, or it's in the same wiring. Um, then you've got your your coil, and but it's getting its trigger from the ECU, so it's going to be one of those three things more than likely. <sighs> we'll go through and uh, test your 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 uh, your trigger which is going to be in the same wiring for your stator you can just bring a uh, a magnet over the the reader itself if you want to call it that and see if you're getting a contact closure and uh, that's pretty much what's triggering uh, the ignition system if not this may have somehow another zampure ec you've never heard of it before but hmm who's to say it couldn't have happened all right. Wish I was, could have been more help on that one, MC. Um, tell you what, guys, mark that question and let me dig into his uh, YFC 4 question, 450 question. Because honestly, if I can't see a schematic, it's harder for me to determine how things can go uh, or what went wrong. But uh, yeah, I want to dig into this one, MC. So I'll see what I can come up with you, with for you. Barney's Barn, how do you get. <laughs> Well, how do you get three dead birds out of the exhaust stack of an M35 A2 deuce and a half? Well, first you drive all the way up here to Virginia, what, seven years ago? And you bring along a mechanic that honestly didn't know what he was doing, but he did have access to a lot of tools, a couple of uh, deep cell marine batteries, and you crank over that old dinosaur and it blows out the three birds like they're nothing. <laughs> that was a hell of a trip, wasn't it? <clears throat> Jacob Taylor, most stressful work week of my life is finally over. Good to see you, John. Well, I'm glad you're here with us, Jacob. And for a few more minutes, I will answer some more questions than, uh, than I, I will be. Heading down to a, uh, a local bar, where which I feel some of my friends are already at, sending me questions about an M35A2. 
Panagiotis, hello from Sweden. Hi, John, I really appreciate your gift, but I think that I have a problem with my stator. I'm going to check back tomorrow. She's going to be in the garage for some, some more time. What a coincidence. I was running down a problem on our 2005, and I wasn't sure what it was either. But I started with a, a new stator assembly that turned out to be my ECU. So guess what? I have an extra stator just laying in a box. It's like I need to look up your shipping address. <laughs> I'll go ahead and send it to you. Why not? <clears throat> Veep 78. I have a TRX 70. Cool little machine. It does not have spark. I have changed the CDI spark plug with cord and coil. Still nothing. Wow. Just shifter switch has been permanently grounded and all uh, and all magneto coal values seem to be in spec tips well i wonder if it's not getting the trigger from that uh that little sensor that's next to the coil something's telling or not telling it to fire and it looks like you've changed out every single thing except that so you may want to take a peek at that it has to be told when to actually send that signal you know, or uh, send that voltage and you've replaced everything else. So take a look at that. Yeah, Mid Lake, go to, yes, boats, etc. Boats.net. Yep. And I'm feeling you track me down over there. Do I need to start answering questions for the boat guys now? Maybe on a Thursday, Thursdays at three? Give them a head start. Yeah, we've actually talked about it. Panagiotis came back. Uh, it's difficult to start, and I checked it today, but when I kickstarted it, it doesn't have spark. It's where I was. So, like I said, I'll box it up and shoot it to you. Why not? Northwood Peach Tree. It's a great video today. Did we release another one today? I haven't even looked yet. I guess that's possible. All right, guys, I'm catching up with you. And it's only 317. I do want to share this since we're talking about the 450. I'm probably going to get in trouble with the, uh, our, our um, I don't want to call it my marketing team. The, uh, you meant this one. Cool. <laughs> I saw I don't need to be in the studio to do this. Our multimedia department. We have a really talented photographer on our on our, our team, and he was taking some beauty shots of our uh, 450. But the cool part is, we went from that to that. We had our plastics done by a guy with he is. Uh, Actually, an old motocross rider, old, but you know, a young, all of everybody's young to me. Uh, his name is Lee, and he is with Rogue Lab. And this interesting guy, his name's Lee Stewart. And if you do a search for Lee Stewart 38 on YouTube, you can come up with um, a little video that he did for us and uh, take a peek at it. It's, it's going to be a, a cool finish to that particular project, which we're not quite done with yet, but um, it, it's going to be pretty cool. So maybe go check out his site. And I gave you a little preview of uh, what you'll be seeing from us uh, when I get back in town. All right. We got one more question. It looks like my Innova, Innova Motorcycling. John, how are you? I am well. I have a CBR 250R. 2013. I replaced the steering uh, st the steering OEM bearings. I switched to roller bearings. What do you think should be the new tightening torque? Well, honestly, it should be the same. We did the same uh, procedure on our Goldwing. Of course, it had ball bearings, and then we went with a set of tapered ones from All Balls Racing, and they recommended going back with the factory specs because, well, that's what they said to go with, and it, it seems to be working fine. Because you're basically just changing your surface area as far as the dynamics in between 
an edge of a race uh, being tapered and then the, the ball bearings. But this is still the same amount of pressure or stiction should be there for whichever uh, the system that you're going with. So go back with the, uh, the factory specs, whatever that might be. All right, Claptow is asking me, hey, John, I work at Honda World in Coos Bay, Oregon, and we all like to learn from your videos. Well, I'm glad that I can help you because that is what, oh, well, when I'm there, <laughs> it's, it's what our, our mission statement is at uh, Partzilla. You know, we're all enthusiasts, and we're here, here to help, and also to make a living, but mostly here to help, so, especially the uh, endeavor we started shoot now five six years ago with our, our youtube channel and it's been a whole lot of fun doing it i mean when the ceo came to me um and said hey john can you do a how-to video on changing an oil on a unit i'm thinking about starting a youtube channel i was like okay well who are you going to get to do the videos after i'm done i wasn't counting on all this but hey if the shoe fits you roll with it well, all right, guys, I caught up with you, and I think I answered all the questions I missed from uh, from last week. So if anybody drops one in between uh, now or after we uh, we sign off, you know, we'll make a note of it and get back to it. But I am going to get on the other side of that door and find my group and go have some fun. So everybody have a great weekend, a great week. God willing, I will be back in town and be Streaming from the studio. Maybe I'll have that CRF 450R in the background behind me. It looks so good. I can't wait to see it in person because Garrett actually swapped out the, the plastics for us. Well, like I said, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for shopping with us. We'll see you next week. And y'all take care. See you soon.